everybody, how are you doing? 11 weeks until Hampton Court Half Marathon. Hope you're all well. I didn't get out to record any video whilst I was training last week. It's really dark at the moment in the UK. It's dark, it's gloomy. Um, it's another couple of weeks before the winter solstice and nights start drawing out so it's wake up and it's dark, going from work and it's dark, training carries on but just not easy to record at the moment. Uh, so last week on the Monday I did a swim, um, a nice little swim pyramid block which I did on my own. Tuesday was a club run four or five miles, I think I did faster group, so five miles, leading a small but faster group. Uh, Wednesday I did seven miles, eight minute miles-ish. Thursday club run, run again and then Friday I gave blood. So that was my 47th blood donation. Um, I don't know if you get a t-shirt for 50, a bit like Parker, it'd be good if you did. Um, but I've been trying to get to 50. I just see it as a nice target, it's like anything, it's good to have a target. It's 50 blood donations. I wanted to do it before I was 50 years old, but Covid kind of put a downer on that. So I think you can do it every four months now. So this time next year I should have my 50th blood donation done. I'll carry on obviously, but 50 is a nice target. So anyway, I gave my 47th blood donation on Friday. I never have any issues, any problems with giving blood, although it really does knacker my running for a, a good 10 days or so. I, ha I had a few gaps in, in blood donations because I had a couple of bad experiences of giving blood and then going for a run the next day and feeling like I was going to collapse and feeling like a black tunnel sort of building around me. So I, I stopped for a while but I'm, I'm back giving blood now um, but I have no expectations of my running for sort of the next 10 days afterwards. So I don't, I don't give blood if I'm near to a race, if I'm within a month or so of a race. So I sort of sneaked this blood donation session in on Friday last week because I'm not near any races that matter at all. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't run on Saturday. I just I did park run in the morning. Um, and I ran on Sunday. And heart rate was through the roof, as I expect, after giving blood. Heart rate was crazy high, up in the one mid-170s. At a very easy pace so that's kind of expected but what else happened last week I saw the physio again on Friday evening um, no pain at all when I'm running for my calves no pain no discomfort I'm be, being very good with after a run I do the stretches that she's shown me how to do um, I then have a hot bath which again is physio advice and then I get the massage gun out or the foam roller out and I give the calves, both calves, a good beating. She did remind me not just to do the one that's been injured but to do both of them, to do the good calf as well but um, I've had no issues from the calves whatsoever which is great. I feel like training can crack on again um, and I just know I need to maintain those um, stretches and massaging and I'm also doing calf raises um, and a few other exercises that she gave me. So I'm, I'm doing my best to work on everything other than the running. Nutrition, talking about that, nutrition is something that's going really well at the moment. So I've been um, working with an Instagram contact called Kerry, who's a nutrition coach and a ridiculously fast runner, um, for just over three weeks now. and. I'm absolutely loving it. I, I probably mentioned it in the last week's video actually, but just over three weeks with Kerry, 
Um, the meal choices she gave me, she gives me each week on Friday. She gives me meals for the following week: um, breakfasts, snacks, lunches. I'm absolutely nailing every single time. Dinners, a little bit of alteration just to fit in with family life and things like that. But um, you know, as I say, normally if you can be 80% consistent. 100% of the time you're in a pretty good place um, so whilst I'm hitting at least 80% of the meals that she gives me I'm also not having crisps bags of Haribo packets of biscuits toast before bed a lot of bad habits have gone for over three weeks and that's the longest I've gone on a nutrition plan in a very long time so I'm really enjoying it and it's not a weight loss program Kerry didn't stress this to me, it's not a weight loss programme, it is a sports nutrition programme. So she's fueling my running and my sports with enough um, nutrition to help me achieve my running goals and not impact my running or my fitness, whilst also just bringing the weight down a little bit. So when I signed up with her, I was like 77.9 kilograms 78 kilograms is the heaviest I've ever been heaviest since records began I should say um, so I was 77.9 when I signed up with her um, over the course of the following sort of week while she was putting my plan together and getting lists of what food I like and don't like and food diary and all that sort of stuff Whilst all that was going on, I went down from 77.9 to 76.4 kgs. So I lost a kilo and a half just by not snacking in the evenings, mainly. So when I started with her three weeks ago, I was 76.4 or 5 kgs. Um, just over three weeks later, at the last weigh-in last week, I was 72. So weigh-in is on a Friday. I was 72.4 kgs. Friday just gone um, which is obviously a three no four kg loss in three weeks but a five and a half almost six kg loss in a month pretty much um, and I did do a cheeky little way this morning and I'm down below 72 at the moment so that's going really really well and I'm really excited by that because I never used to weigh myself I don't know five years ago and certainly looking back at race photos from 2014 2015 I was a lot slimmer <clears throat> I didn't train as well I didn't train as effectively to run so I was running lighter but not training as focused so if I can get the two together if I could be training as well as I am now but running at the weight I was then then I think I'm in a really good place with regards to things like getting closer to three hours. Um, who knows, those sort of goals. So, you know, the meals that she gives me are fantastic and I'm loving it. So every other day through the week, I, I do either something like a protein and fruit shake, or I do poached eggs on toast. And I get the occasional curveball, which today was peanut butter and jam on toast so she knows I have a bit of a sweet tooth and she does occasionally just occasionally just throw in something really tasty um, one of my favorites is skim milk protein powder frozen raspberries and peanut butter smoothie oh god it's amazing it's like a it's like a posh dessert really when you're not having so much in the way of sweet food something like that just hits the spot it really does um, Lunches are things like a smoked salmon and cream cheese bagel or um, chicken salad um, or a brown wrap with stuff in. I can't remember exactly. Um, today I've got, one day a week I have what I've got today which is a tin of tuna, half a packet of boiled, half a um, sort of microwave sachet of boiled rice. Um, some lettuce, some tomatoes, some cucumber, 
sounds a bit plain, but it's really nice. And I'm allowed to use all sorts of sort of chilli sauces and seasoning and things like that. So I enjoy this lunch that I'm having today. I'm just on my way home from work to go and have my lunch, but I like this one. I warm the, the rice up in the microwave, put the tuna on top, a bit of um, balsamic dressing, side salad, load of spinach as well. It's a good lunch, but yeah, nutrition going really well. Um, and it's that old accountability thing, you know, I know the last three weeks have gone well, I've gone down, I lost two kgs the first week, one kg the following week and about half a kg in week three. So it's going really well and I don't want to upset that now, so I've got a lot of self-control that I wouldn't normally have. I've had to do trips to the supermarket where I would normally go and buy two bags of Haribo and a family bag of crisps and just snack like crazy, shovel this stuff in when no one's around. Um, but now I can walk through those aisles, in fact sometimes I can buy a packet of chocolate biscuits, I'm turning into a bit of a feeder, but I can buy a packet of chocolate biscuits for the family or crisps for the family and I won't eat them, you know, normally I would shovel them down. But at the moment I'm quite happy not eating them because I've also done before and after photos. So I did a, a photo of me and my boxers when I started with Kerry and I did another one three weeks in, i.e. last Friday. And I can actually see a difference. And I don't want to let myself down though, so I'm, I'm super motivated to see where we get to. The only drawback I can see at the moment is that Week six is Christmas week. And honestly, what is better than snuggled up watching a Christmas film with mince pies and cheese and biscuits and Christmas sweets and chocolates and all that good stuff. I love Christmas snacking. Oh, I really love it. And I don't know what I'm gonna do this time round. I don't know how I'm gonna survive. I'm gonna have to be strong. just not snack like an idiot. This, you know, this whole nutrition plan isn't just to get to Christmas, that's not the goal, and then let it all go. The, the plan is to race in April Manchester Marathon at sub 70 kilograms, but strong, fit, well trained, in the best shape I could be in. So Christmas isn't the goal to get to, it is April, so Christmas is just going to have to take a bit of a hit this year round, this time round, and you know, I don't, if, if I slip back a kg or two because I have a mince pie and a glass of water, who cares? I know, I think I've got more self-control and I can have one of something rather than the whole packet, or I can have two, two chocolates and not feel I need to guzzle the whole box away. So I think I've got a lot more self-control this time round, uh, and that's going really well. I've got no injuries currently, that's going really well. I've got a 10k in three weeks time. I've got half marathon in 11 weeks time, which seems a bit mad that February is 11 weeks away. Um, I've got Manchester marathon in April. I've got this hilly nighttime marathon in June and I found another trail marathon I kind of fancy for May. Um, I'm really tempted, it's, it's a super hilly, it's got lots of grade one scrambling up um, sort of rocky mountain paths and things. Completely out of character for the normal races that I would do but I'm really tempted by it, particularly as I would have to train in Norfolk on the flat ground to, do, to run some mountain marathons which seems like something quite cool to do, see how well you can train on the flat to run up mountains. Or well, not run up mountains, but participate in mountain marathons. I'm only ever gonna walk up a mountain, I'm not gonna run up them, I'm sure. But I am tempted to sign up for this May Snowden Skyline, it's called. Have a little look, if you don't mind, have a little look at the Snowden Skyline, see if you think it looks like a fun race to do. Let me know your thoughts about training for a mountain marathon when you live in the flatlands of Norfolk. Um, 
and how you're doing let me know how you're doing i know this has been a massively dull video because i'm just driving home to have my lunch and it's not even a very exciting lunch but anyway back on it next week sorry this has been a boring video if you're still here listening thank you but do fire some comments in about what your thoughts about nutrition about races about mountain marathons um, and anything else let me know what you're up to what you're training for anyway I'm almost home so I'll end it here thank you very much hope you're all well hope you're all avoiding Covid which is still hanging about um, soon be Christmas the nights will start drawing out and then bring on the spring the summer and the races for next year anyway see you soon have a good one See you later, bye.